your playtime. Presented by Quick, the Richard Hudnut new home permanent with a 10-minute waving lotion. And Lucky Strike, the cigarette that tastes better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. And now, your Richard Hudnut hostess, Julia Mead. Hello. I'm so glad you can be with us. I know you'll like our story tonight. It's a perfect story for a summer evening with just the right mixture of drama, romance, and chilly suspense. But first, I'd like to talk about Quick, the new Richard Hudnut home permanent. Quick's the quickest, longest-lasting home permanent there is. That's because only Quick has a 10-minute waving lotion and takes just one hour from start to setting. And Quick's special wave vitalizer locks in soft, springy curls like mine to last beautifully at least six months. Try Quick, the double lanolized home permanent by Richard Hudnot. on the steps? Waiting for Vicky to get through with the practicing. Vicky's going to have her hands full help me in the kitchen prepare for the Ranleys. They're coming today from every corner in the state of Maine. I wouldn't count on her if I was you. Well, we'd like to help you too, Hannah. Oh, that's sweet of you babies, but you can't. Now you run along and play. And Hannah's going to see to it there's going to be lots of goodies left over after the company's gone. Gee, thanks. You sure make that old dustbin sing. <laughs> there, there. Now, what's this all about? Vicky Patashi, that'll do. I'm sorry, Hannah. There, there. Tell me what it's all about, child. It's just... I suddenly thought this is the last time I'll ever play this beautiful piano. Hmm. Well, if that's what... If it's... I don't have a piano to practice on, I'd just as soon be dead. What's going to happen to you after today? We don't know what's going to happen to you or the house or the piano or anything. Well, when the Randleys come, they'll decide. And right now, it's no use in you and I sitting here fretting about it. Well, a lot those Randleys care about anything. Not one of them's been here since old Mr. Randley died. But they'll all be here today. Yeah, just to find out what Mr. Randley left in his will. All they'll be interested in is what they'll be getting. Well, just the same. They gotta be fed. Oh, Hannah, you're impossible. Whole house is tumbling down on our heads, and all you can think of is getting their dinners. Well, I've been doing it for 40 years. You haven't the faintest idea of what's going to happen today. Well, we'll all know soon enough now, young lady. Here, take these groceries to the kitchen and start shelling the peas. There's going to be a gang of mouths to feed before this day's over. Quiet, I hear you. You ain't careful, you wake up the whole neighborhood. I brought a lot of groceries. Now come down and give me a hand with them. Groceries. Head of lettuce, two tomatoes, and a box of kumquats. I've never seen a more disreputable looking place. Is that the best uniform you've got to wear when, when the whole family is going to assemble for the first time since you've known them? Well, I ain't seen nobody passing out any new uniforms lately. Besides, when the whole family gets here, there's going to be so much fireworks, nobody's going to pay no attention to what I got on my back. I brought lettuce, tomatoes, and kumquats. And you remember how I like them, with cream. Yes, Miss Fanny. I also brought a pound of coffee. Yes, Miss Fanny, and I'll see that you take home what we don't use. Well, you remember how I like it? One half level teaspoon full to a cup? Yes, and why don't I just boil a pot of water and throw some soot into it? If you had any idea how much a pound of coffee costs these days. Will you please step inside? You know how Miss Esther worries herself sick in case the sun might fade this carpet. 
I came early to help you in the kitchen. Well, don't bother about the kitchen. I can take care of that. You just see if the parlor's to your liking. I suppose that's where you'll all be sitting. Lord, that was Fanny. When she was a grown girl, you know you couldn't get her near this kitchen. Now she wants to come in here and help. Head of lettuce, two tomatoes, and a box of kumquats when there's more than ten mouths to feed. Well, this doesn't look like anybody's going hungry. Oh, and I think of all the meals I've prepared for this Randley family in the past 40 years. Is it true one of them's coming all the way from Africa today? Mm-hmm. Young Mr. Christopher. He's Bruce's son. I've never seen him because he was born in Africa. His father was the oldest and my favorite of all the Ranley children. He left about 30 years ago to become a missionary in Africa. Just passed away a couple of months ago. That's why they're waiting now for the reading of the will until young Christopher gets here. Mr. Medford didn't want to wait, but old lawyer Forbes made him. Yes. Oh, well, it was up to me. I'd make a deal with you right now. Yeah, well, the old place is no use to any of us anymore. And, of course, it make a perfect factory site for you. Yeah, but, unfortunately, it's not just up to me. You see, there are three other heirs. No, three. There's my sister Esther, my half-sister Fanny, and my late brother Bruce's son, Christopher. Yes. So, you see, if, it, if it's left to all of us, then all of us have got to agree to sell. Otherwise, it'd be one of those old family free-for-alls. <laughs> Yeah. Well, look, I'll tell you what. Um, why don't you leave me your number down there in Boston, and, and I'll phone you our decision this afternoon. Well, yeah, looks like Fanny beat you to it. Can't imagine why Fanny insists on driving that crazy old rattle trap. She's the laughing stock of the whole town. Ah, don't go picking a spat with Fanny today. If this deal with that Boston firm goes through, that property will be worth a fortune. We've got to convince everybody that they've got to act sensibly and harmoniously for once for the good of all. Well, you know how silly and sentimental Fanny always is. She just hates to part with anything. Well, if the place is left to be divided up among you, then it's up to you to convince her. I've got to go down to the bank to see old Hawkins while we're in town. I'll be back here at 12. Mm -hmm. Not too thick, sugar. The skin's the best part of the potato. If I peel them any thinner, how I won't get all the dirt off. More Randleys. That'll be Miss Esther. Ever since she was a brat in pigtails, I've told her that once was enough to use that knocker. But not Miss Esther. She's got to knock like it was the walls of Jericho. Hello, Hannah. Good heavens, just look at that carpet. You can hardly see the pattern anymore. Well, if you don't hurry up and come in, the sun will fade what's left of it out. Never seen a place to generate so fast. Maybe if some of you come around more often to lend a hand, it could degenerate quicker. Your sister's already arrived. Fanny, dear, how are you? It's about time you asked that. If I remember rightly, I haven't heard from you since Father's funeral. Oh, well, I do have a few things to do, Fanny, with Lester and three children to take care of. And after all, Bangor isn't exactly next door, you know. Of course, the postcard does take a two-cent stamp these days. <laughs> Same old Fanny. I'm not aware that I'm that much older than you, Esther. No, I didn't come here to quarrel with you, Fanny. Take a magician to know that. As a matter of fact, I'm awfully glad we both got here before the others. You see, we've got a lot of things to talk about. Well, I'd like... I'd like to first confine ourselves to Hannah. Oh, she's become absolutely impossible. She hadn't been with us for 40 years. I wouldn't tolerate her insolence for a moment. I agree. I've never seen a more disreputable-looking place. Disgusting. It really ought to be sold, Fanny. Don't you think so? After all, we've all got our own homes. And you've got that sweet little apartment. I'm glad that you like it. You haven't been in it much lately. I don't remember being invited.
That's Bruce's knock. Any rags, bottles, or old newspapers today? You're Chris. My Bruce's boy, home. And, uh, and it's good to be home, too. You know, Dad's told me so much about you, I feel like I've known you all my life. I, I hope you didn't mind my coming around the back door. <laughs> no. That's just what your dad always did. Make a beeline to the kitchen to be speaking to Hannah. Why are you crying? Well, wouldn't you be if your baby came home to you after 30 years? Oh. Tarnation. There goes that door again. That will be your Uncle Medford and your Aunt Mildred. But Hannah, nobody told me who that might be. That's Vicky. Oh, well, how do you do, Vicky? How do you do? Is she one of my relatives, too? I'm proud to say this. No connection. Oh, that's nice. Hannah! That's very nice. Hannah! Quiet the lot of you. I declare your Aunt Esther will be driving me batty before this day is out. Hannah, don't tell them I'm here. I'll have plenty of time to see all of them later, okay? Okay, leave it to old Hannah. <laughs> Hannah? Coming! I ain't deep yet! So long as we're all here, uh, most of us anyway, I think while we're waiting for Mr. Forbes and the will to arrive, we should come to decisions on the two family matters it faces. First, the disposition of the house, and second, what disposition is to be made of Hannah? Well, I fail to see that Hannah's our problem at all. In that case, all there's left to be discussed is the disposition of the property. You know, I, I'm afraid, as much as I know of Father's estate, that he left very little beside the house. His investments were unfortunate the last few years prior to his death, and. And I doubt if there's any... That's just what I told you, Lester, time and time again. This house is probably all that's left. That's why we, we should show a cooperative spirit as a family for once. That is, if it's to be divided amongst us, which seems most likely. I most thoroughly agree. How often we've all heard of places being left to groups like this, and one person unwilling to sign off his rights, and so preventing the sale... Sale, sale, money. That's all any of you think of. If all we can think of is getting it, Fanny, all you can think of is saving it, or ever could. Now, now don't tell us any more about your finer feelings. Mildred, will you please not... The most reasonable assumption here seems to be that the house was left to be divided among all of us. And the most reasonable way to divide it would be to sell it for what it'll bring and divide the money. I will never agree to that, as long as I live. Oh, Fanny. Now, Fan, listen. Suppose I were to tell you that a big Boston firm wants to buy this place for a factory site. Now, that might mean a fortune for all of us. Bona fide off, I can substantiate it 100%. I still wouldn't consent to a sale. Oh, Fanny. Not even if we refuse to let you live here and the place disintegrates before your very eyes? I still wouldn't consent, just to spite all of you. I'm afraid we'll have to defer this discussion till later. Mm. That'll be Mr. Forbes. Dinner's ready. Be ready to come on and get it, children. The second part of our play in a moment, but now I'd like you to meet my friends, Roseanne and Bob. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Roseanne's a popular young actress model, and tonight we have something special to show you. You see, before her wedding six months ago, Roseanne needed a home permanent. I told her how quick and easy Richard Hudnut quick home permanent is, and, well, here's what you could have seen if you'd been watching Roseanne for just one hour that day six months ago. Quick, quick, Richard Hudnut, new home permanent, quick, quick, can be done in just one hour. From start to setting, get Richard Hudnut, new home permanent, and get it quick. And here's Roseanne tonight, six months later, with her smart, quick hairstyle. See how beautifully her curls have lasted? So if you want the home permanent that's really fast and really lasts, try Quick, the double analyzed home permanent by Richard Hudnut. Mmm, does that smell good? You know, nothing in the world smells as good as newly baked bread. You sound just like your father. I can see him sitting at the same place at my table, smacking his lips and waiting for these to come out the oven. Now, here's one for you and one for you. Both taste them and tell me how you like them. Mm. I've never tasted anything better. You know, now I know what Dad meant when he said that 
Everything Hannah does, even the lowliest thing, is filled with love. Ah, oh, gorgeous, you sweet talk, boy. You know, you sound just like your father used to. Hannah? You better start whipping the cream for the dessert, Vicky. If I know Medford, he'll be through with his dinner and screaming for the dessert before the others have even got started on the main course. I'll get right at it, Hannah. Amazing woman. Yes. And since Mr. Randy died, she's let me come here every day. And I'm not the only one. I don't know what I was doing in Africa. You're joking. But I'm not. This house has been a, a refuge. Whatever anybody needed. Children have come here and Hannah's fed them. Women have come here and Hannah's made up beds for them. When they didn't have anywhere else to sleep, we were afraid to go home. You Randy's call her a cook. We put trees and everyone else on this block knows she's a saint. Well, sure, sure she's a saint, but why are you crying? I'm not. Well, okay, you're not, but why would you be if you were? Because this is the last day, Hannah's last day. Nothing she's done in the past six months will come out of any pocket but her own. I don't believe she could afford it. And now I don't know what will become of her. She's getting old. She never mentions the future. I don't believe she ever thinks of it. Oh, you're all so blind, so stone blind. Look, what would you say if you found that, that we're not all so blind as we look? You don't know your relatives, Chris. But they ever knew what she's been doing here, taking the whole neighborhood in. <laughs> Great balls of fire. Give me the beater, Vicky. Like I told you, Mr. Medford is already through with his dinner and now screaming for the dessert. Honestly, the way that man carries on, you'd think this was the only place in all Maine you could get prune with. <laughs> and that reminds me, the way they're all fretting and worrying about you not showing up, it's high time you made your appearance in there, young man. Hannah! <sighs> that Miss Esther, I declare she's going to drive me bugs before this day is out. Come in! Oh, boy. Something tells me that I'd better be having dessert and coffee with the family. Certainly a delicious luncheon, Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Forbes. Oh, uh, Hannah, well, why don't you make another pot of that coffee? Oh, there's plenty. I brought a whole pound. <clears throat> Mildred, uh, did you think to bring anything? I didn't bring anything. It didn't occur to me, really. Terribly sorry. It's quite all right. Everything's taken care of nicely. Oh, nicely. Esther brought Lester. <clears throat> well, Mr. Forbes, are you going to let us hear that will? I don't like to seem unduly hasty, but we've got a long ride back to Bangor. Yes, of course. Uh, let me see. This may come as quite a surprise to you. Something of a shock. I'm not sure Mr. Runley was wise in being so secretive about his affairs. But it was his right, of course, and perhaps he had his reasons. <clears throat> well, here it is. I, Ethan Randley, make this my last will and testament. After the payment of my just debts, if any, I give the sum of money in my name at the Citizens Bank approximately $3,000, to the Lyman School for Boys, from which I was graduated in 1886. A nearly equal amount, now on account of the Merchants Bank, I give to the First Congregational Church, which I served for 30 years. The remainder of my estate, consisting of 200 shares of stock, in which my son Medford invested $10,000 in June 1951, and which are now worth something less than $500, I give to my sons, said Medford and Bruce, and my daughters, Fanny and Esther, to be disposed of at such time and in such manner as they can agree on. I declare this to be my last will and testament, signed and sealed this 12th day of May, 1954. What? Well, what? Well, it doesn't mention the house. It's quite true, Miss Randley. 
Because your father didn't own the house. Didn't what? own it? Of course he owned it. It's been in the family since 1647. Why, it's preposterous. I'm sorry, but he didn't own it. The house and everything in it was sold about a year before his death. But, 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 but how could it have been? Sold? To whom? I believe it was sold to Hannah Loomis. Hannah? To Hannah? For what? Money. I believe the $6,000 he mentions in his will. And where, I'd like to know, did she get $6,000? I dare say she'd saved her money, and her insurance came due. And now, since my business is done... You I... say this transaction took place a year before he died? But he never mentioned it, and he continued to live here. I think Hannah was glad to have him. She'd grown used to him. He contributed food from time to time. He assured me that he ate very little. <laughs> he meant... He meant... He meant it was hers all the time. And we were sitting here Mildred, will you stop it? Now stop it. Huh? You. It seems that the Randleys are about to thank you, Miss Loomis. Not only for the preparation and serving of that delicious dinner, but for the salt with which it was flavored, and the butter with which it was spread, the sugar and the cream for the coffee, and that exquisite dessert. But most of all, for the graciousness with which you have extended us your hospitality. In the words of Vicki, Hannah, you certainly are a refuge and a saint. Great balls of fire! You young ones sure can speak some nice words. Why? Well, I was going to the movies. Of course, I, I, I expect that stock to, to pick up again, you know, in time. But what under heaven, man, did you ever put $10,000 into? $10,000. Now, look. Look here, we're not licked yet. Chris, you go tell Hannah to come in here, will you? Lester. How much money can you raise? I mean, immediately. I'll have to know for what. After all, you can't expect me to... Look, I think that we can buy this place back from Hannah on a quick cash deal. What she paid for it, plus a reasonable but small profit. And then we, in turn, can sell it to the people for the factory site. And we'll quadruple our investment, believe me. Well, I've not been unaware of the possibilities myself. As a matter of fact... <clears throat> Anybody in here want to speak to me? Uh, well, yes, Hannah, I did, if you have a minute. Oh, minutes is about all I got left in my life now, Mr. Medford, so what can I do for you? Uh, well, um, we've been talking things over, Hannah, and, and we don't feel right about the house going out of the family. Of course, we know that it's run down and that the neighborhood's gone to pot and all that, but still, the, the Randleys have lived here since 1647, you know, and um, Hannah... How would you like to get rid of it? Get rid of it? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Medford, but I've grown to love this place like it was my home, to feel a part of it, almost like a Ranley in a way. Uh, I, I could never give it up. But we'd see to it that you got another place, smaller, more modern, easier for you to take care of. Thanks, Mr. Lester, but... I'm still afraid I'm not interested. You see, I've spent the most of my life here, right here in this house, and I might as well spend the rest of it here, too. Yeah, well, Hannah, look, uh, uh, we, we give you a bonus, you see, uh, in excess of, of what you paid father. But it's not the money. It don't mean anything to me, Mr. Medford. Great balls of fire. Chris was telling me some factory people met him at the boat and offered him $40,000. I only paid six for it. But that wouldn't make no difference. You see, this house means something to me. I remembered all the good times we've had in it when you were children. I remember your father and your mother and my Bruce. It would be like separating me from my family to leave this house. No, I just can't force myself to do it. I fully realize it belongs to the Randleys. It was Randleys who built it, and Randleys who've lived in it for generation upon generation. So I fixed it in my will for this house to go to all of you. 
and you'll be free to do what you like with it when I'm gone. As old Hannah won't be here then to see what happens. Have I answered your question, Mr. Medford? Yes, Hannah, you, you answered my question. Oh, thank you. Thank you. going now what in tarnation are you two young'uns doing get away from that sink you said you had some practicing to do on the piano, remember? Now's the time to start doing it. Please, Hannah, I want to help. Dishwashing is my job, young lady. Playing the piano is yours. And if you'll just stick to that job long enough, you'll have nothing to worry about. Take it from old Hannah. All right, Hannah, if that's what you want. That's what Hannah wants. Hmm. What in tarnation was that all about? Women, don't ask me. Is it okay if I stick in here with you, Hannah? <sighs> Oh, look, I'm a pretty good handyman around a house. Heck, carpentering, electricity, plumbing, plastering, dishes, almost anything. Hannah, could you board another Randley for a while, like you did my grandfather? Board you? Shame on you, Christopher, for asking me that. Like I always used to say to your granddad, old Mr. Randley, it's nice to have a man around the house. Oh, thanks. Light up the lucky, it's light up time. Be happy, go lucky, it's light up time. For the taste that you like, light up the lucky strike. Relax, it's light up time. There's a time and a place for everything. And the right time for a lucky is any time you want to enjoy a great cigarette. And the right place for a Lucky is wherever you happen to be at the time. You'll always enjoy Lucky's because Lucky's taste better. Lucky Strike is made of fine, naturally good-tasting tobacco. And it's toasted to taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Yes, sir, Lucky's taste better. Anytime, anywhere. So right now, light up a Lucky. It's light up time. Enjoy the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. You know, there's nothing so good to make your hair shine as an old-fashioned egg shampoo, except Richard Hudnut Enriched Cream Shampoo with real eggs powdered right into the golden lotion cream. Enriched cream shampoo leaves hair beautifully clean and manageable. And see the wonderful sheen it gives my hair. You'll have it too with enriched cream shampoo. And for the perfect shampoo finish, Richard Hudnut Cream Rinse. 